What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Today's project is going to be a pretty cool one in my opinion. Uh, I'm stoked to make it. It's going to be a vinyl record storage crate. Um, I'm doing making this for my buddy Anthony. Um, he is a massive uh, lover of vinyl records. Uh, he already has one crate. He needs another one so he asked me if I could whip him up one and that's exactly what we're going to do today. I'm going to put a little bit of a cool touch on the end product to customize it to him a little bit. Um, if my idea goes as planned, it'll turn out pretty sweet. So that's the goal. That's what we're working on. And the first step I actually already did, and I will show you what that step is first in the step next step is taking any type of scrap wood you may have. For me, this was just some one by six common board I had. Uh, I ripped those to two inch in width pieces. So all these pieces here, two inches in width. And I was using that for another project actually, but then I ended up not needing it. So it kind of worked out. Here we got our slats all cut uh, for the side pieces. The next thing I need to do is cut all the uh, pieces that will make up the front and back square of this crate. Um, Looking at the product dimensions, it says it's nine and a half inches tall and then 13 inches wide, like 13.75. So I think I might just round it up to 14 to be safe. Um, definitely like weird dimensions um, when you like compare the dimensions to the picture, but it's whatever, we're gonna get this done. I do have a record of my own, only one, um, uh, that I can use as like a reference. So I'm definitely gonna be doing that to make sure this is appropriate in size and everything, but that's where we're at. So you'll see me rip a piece to one and an inch quarter thick, and then we'll start making all the cuts to make our two squares. All right, so we have the frames cut. Here's one all put together. There's a second one not put together. Uh, I took the measurement from left to right, which comes out to 15 and a half. And then obviously I did top down, which came out to nine and a half. So I did this because I'm going to take quarter inch plywood as a way to be the inside uh, filler um, to fill this space. Um, and then I'm gonna do that two times, one for the front piece, one for the back piece. So we're gonna use the table saw, gonna rip it to nine and a half inches tall, 15 and a half inches wide. And then we're gonna do something cool to it afterwards. Fingers crossed, if I'm good. I'm average at best usually, but here we go. Feeling good, feeling lucky. Roll the clip. See, we have our two panels here now. We have our four sides for the square, uh, for the front and back squares. We have our six pieces of side slat right down there. And the last thing we need is our bottom slats. So this design, uh, it has four bottom slats, and again, I have a piece of, I think this is one by eight, uh, left over. And I'm just gonna rip these again to the same dimensions, which is two inches thick, get as many two inch pieces out of this piece that I have left, and then hopefully by making my cuts, I will be at the four pieces that I need. All right, so we finished sanding. And then the step that I thought was kind of cool, uh, maybe I'm a loser, very possible, is I traced out a box, as you can kind of see the eraser marks that were left um, around in the center of these panels. And I put my friend's initials right there. The A at, will be at the front of the crate, the L will be on the back. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take ebony stain and I'm gonna try using a Q-tip to get these, cause these are kind of like finer lines that I'm trying to stay within. And usually whenever uh, uh, you use a cloth, obviously there's always splatter and stuff. So I'm gonna try using Q-tips, try to get that into the wood in those uh, outlines that I made. I did freehand these. Uh, the reason why I didn't record myself freehanding them is cause I had to use my phone in order to reference like uh, varsity letter styles. And you can kind of see I was playing around with it till I got it to look good, till I got it to be up to my expectations. So. Next step, staining these letters, letting that dry, and then we are gonna seal all this up.
kind of show the technique that goes into this because honestly i didn't really know what i was doing but it actually turned out really good again um it was a time lapse so it's kind of tough to tell but i basically used every q-tip well i actually only used one q-tip so pro tip you only need one q-tip i would dip it you know try to wring it out against the lid and then i would just kind of put it in there uh just like a brush stroke really just trying to paint the stain into my outlines obviously there was a little bleeding over the edge if it wasn't too significant i don't recommend going over it to try to make it perfect uh it'll just keep going out further and further and it'll just kind of ruin what you're going for but for the first time through i'm very happy i'm gonna go over and sand all these outside edges real quick just to make sure that those old pencil markings aren't still in there and then the next step is going to be to put some seal around this right, as you can see here we got everything sealed up now the polyurethane is coated on everything and so we are going to come back and see how it looks in the morning and we're back so it is the next day uh everything dried up really nice i'm going to just do my normal trick of using sandpaper to get the grid down from the polyurethane, so that'll be the next step. I'm not gonna film it for you guys. You've seen me do it plenty of times. So once that done, the next step will be actual assembly. So in the next clip, you'll see the assembly take place. Here's all assembled. Saw that I just took my side pieces, lined them up with my uh, horizontal pieces, Use my clamps, keep it all square. Use drywall screws to attach the sides. And then for the face plates, I used just my nail gun and some wood glue and just brad nailed those right into place. These are both done. Now we're gonna uh, do the side slats. So we're gonna use some clamps again and we're gonna use the drywall screws again. And you'll see how I do it. So we'll roll that clip now. storage crate is complete again we use the drywall screws to assemble all these in place it goes along with how the other original one he bought looks and the drywall screws are not as a coarse of a nail or screw therefore it's not going to eat the wood aka tear or break the wood so that's why we use these drywall screws plus they were the good length so you know, we wouldn't pierce these sides if you had too long of a screw that would pop out here. We don't want that. We want a nice smooth finish. And that's exactly what we got. Again, this was my first uh, storage crate making video process, whatever, all of it project. And I'm super happy with how it turned out. Really like it. And I'm excited to see what my buddy thinks. Uh, I hope he likes it. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell when you do all those things. I think that's all the YouTube jargon. I'm supposed to stay, say, stay safe during the coronavirus. Uh, we got hopefully two more weeks of like shelter in place. We'll be all good and all done with this. Um, fingers crossed. And things can kind of start slowly going back to normal. But again, I'm really loving how this turned out, especially with the A and the L on the back. Looks fantastic. I'm rambling. This clip needs to end. This video needs to end. Thank you so much again. God bless.